Welcome back to Let's Build the Ultimate Indoor Theme Park. At the end of last episode, we built the outline of a nightclub called Trop House that is in the left wing of our amusement park. And I only built the outline because I wanted to build a roller coaster around this nightclub first before we built the rest of it. And that is exactly how we're going to begin this video. So the type of coaster that we're going to be working with is a spinning coaster. The reason I chose this coaster type is because it is a lot more compact and we do not have too much space in this room, especially with everything else that we have built here. But even though this coaster type is a bit more compact, it doesn't make it any less fun because of the coaster cart spinning. The spinning adds lots of just interesting forces that make even a slower track a lot more exhilarating. And at the very top of the chain lift is flattened out a bit because up there we will have a piece that unlocks the spinning capabilities of the cart so we can spin on the main portion of the track. And then I'm building this coaster with much smaller track pieces, which makes the coaster a lot more lumpy whenever I'm originally placing the pieces. But then after using the smoothing tool, it smooths out much, much better because it has a lot more like little segments to smooth with in comparison to larger segments. So this coaster should be a lot more smooth in comparison to the other coasters, but it did take quite a bit more time to build because trying to get every little tiny piece to go in the right direction takes a lot of time. And then it feels weird because the coaster, it feels lumpy when you're building it, but then you smoothen it out and it feels nice. So we have the track of this coaster go back and forth behind where the nightclub is going to be. And this coaster type actually has quite a bit of friction. It slows down quite a bit over the course of the ride. So even though it's not even that long, by this point, the coaster is already going to have lost a lot of its speed. But the reason I have the hills not going up too high towards the end is because I still want the coaster train to still feel like it's moving fast. And if the hills are too hilly, then it'll slow down too much. And I just want the coaster to just like fly through. And then we're already gonna wrap it up down here. We're gonna have it do a big circle. And then that's going to just help it slow back down and just give the guests one more fun little section of spinning around before it loops back into the station. We don't want this coaster to be too long because since it spins, people could get really, really dizzy and sick. So it needs to be like that perfect length so people have a really exhilarating time, but get off before they start to feel any nausea from all the spinning. And of course, we gotta give it a test ride. It's like one of the best parts. So it starts off with a bit of a slower portion. And then we have a very steep and fast chain lift. And the guest got unlocked and the ride begins. Now our camera is placed above, so we're not spinning everywhere, but you see the cart spinning back and forth. I think that ending portion actually looks like it's the most fun portion of the whole ride. It's a bunch of airtime hills while you're spinning around back there. And then it has one big last turn before going back in and locking back into forward motion. Yeah, I'd say that's a pretty solid coaster. And I was wondering what I should name it. And I was thinking about it for a solid like three minutes or so. And I decided to name it the Crocodile. And I'm gonna decorate it with a bunch of crocodile animatronics. The very beginning of the coaster will have the cart kind of swerving around crocodiles that are trying to snap at you. And in the line we'll have some crocodiles and I'll put a big crocodile up by the sign. And later I might recolor it and make it green. But that'll be later because today the main focus is going to be working on Trop House. Now Trop House is a cyber infused tropical club and concert venue. It kind of takes the energy of a rainforest cafe, but turns it more into a club environment. And my goal today is to create a small stage so we can throw small concerts here at the Trop House. And this will be a small concert venue, but in the future, I'm really hoping I can build a much larger concert venue somewhere else in this theme park. 
because I want to have multiple options so we can have multiple shows going on. But for Trap House, I wanted more of a club and restaurant environment with this roller coaster kind of keeping it energized in the background. So this stage size would be a lot better for, I would say DJs more than anything, but it would also be better for smaller acts or even like VIP acts. And then we just have like small VIP events and the stage would be better for smaller, more contained shows for sure. But this venue is definitely going to try to pass off as a bit more high scale and high quality. <laughs> I'm gonna do my best anyways. Do the best I can to create a bougie experience in Planet Coaster. We'll see how it goes. But of course, it's not too bougie because it is in a theme park at the end of the day and has a lot of foot traffic going through it. So it's kind of like that fake theme park bougie. Now the Trop House building is shaping up. This coaster is maybe a little bit closer than I want it to be, but there's a lot of just space being filled up over here with the monorail. So I feel like I'd have to move the monorail somewhere else. I might have to figure that out later. But for now, I'm gonna put up a bunch of scaffolding. The scaffolding is what's going to be holding up all of the heavy lights. Because we're gonna have light shows, lasers, and spoilers, we're about to have some dancing crabs. Oh yeah, that's gonna be the best part about Trap House, is the dancing crabs. Bring out the dancing lobsters. Now, temporarily, as a background, I found this dripping animation that I thought looked cool. So I'm putting that back here, but I'm probably gonna end up putting a large LED screen back here with some cybernetic EDM tropical visuals. And here they are, the dancing crabs! Yeah, they're the real hype men of the Trop House. How can you not see the dancing crabs and not just start dancing like a mad lad? If you guys know that one dancing crab song, the ding 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 The person who made that also made a video game about crabs fighting through different waves of enemies, like different sea life, and you have guns and different stuff and you're bursting through waves. It's a pretty fun game, I've actually played it. And crabs are just such funny little creatures. They're just little crustaceans. Little crusty boys. Oh, that doesn't sound very good. No, I can't, I'm not gonna do crabs like that. And we gotta make sure to light up the crabs. Of course, they need to be seen at all times with their majestic dance moves. But I do love all the different types of lights they have. We have the stationary lights, the moving lights. Also, these dancing crabs are downloaded from the Steam Workshop, the Theme Maker's Toolkit. It is so easy to download stuff from the Theme Maker's Toolkit though. If you have Planet Coaster, you can just do it for free. <laughs> One thing I surprisingly couldn't find on Theme Maker's Toolkit, and they don't have it in Planet Coaster either, is large speakers. The speakers I'm putting on top were the largest speaker, like custom models that I could find but I couldn't find any just large like concert size speakers. So I just built some out of shapes, just put some rectangles and then put some circles on top and voila, we have a speaker. So far I'm having a blast decorating this. I love all the palm trees on stage. Now we're adding the laser lights, which I found these in the Theme Makers Toolkit too. Found like a bunch of polygon wireframe LED pieces that you can use as scenery. <laughs> and it looks so cool. I'm like, what the heck? This is gonna be so sick when it's all done. So I placed quite a bit of that everywhere, but it was moving around. So I had to set it to be stationary because it was just disappearing out of nowhere, which is so random. I don't know what the actual design purpose was, but I thought it was hilarious. And I wanted to fill up the space, but I didn't want it to be too crowded. So I, started stopping at this point and we're going to start working on the other half of the trap house because it's not just a stage it's also going to be a restaurant we're going to have a full service bar and there's going to be bathrooms and it needs to have a kitchen we need to decorate the entrance put a sign there is a lot of work to do but we're going to get it all done in this episode now i'm not going to be putting a roof over all of trop house for the most part it's going to be open because it's already indoors technically so for the most part i'm leaving the floor plan more open and not putting a ceiling anywhere 
But we will have a few roofs to help contain it in because I want to like blend in the kitchen and the bathrooms and make it seem like it's sort of a building still. It's going to be a hybrid building, half indoors, half outdoors, and we can do that and still maintain full capacity at all times because the whole entire thing is technically indoors. It's an indoor-outdoor experience. I found this cool sign on the workshop, gotta place that in, and the next thing I'm gonna build is a bar, an all-service bar so people can get all their favorite cocktails. My favorite cocktails are probably Margarita or Moscow Mule, which is alcohol mixed with ginger beer. And my favorite non-alcoholic drink it's gotta be the classic Coca-Cola, and I like it out the can. I think it feels way colder out of the can. Followed up second by lemonade. <laughs> lemonade is up there, let's go lemonade. Limeade is also really good. So I placed a bunch of all white tables because I kinda like the all white aesthetic, and that's where people can eat at. And we're gonna place a Trop House sign with this cool font that I found. And a little backstory to the name Trop House. I've been calling my house in Los Angeles Trop House for the past four to five years, and it's kind of just been a content creator house, and I call it Trop House because I have a bunch of tropical plants, around 25 or so. I wish I had more, but they are a bit pricey. I love tropical plants, I think they're beautiful, and if I owned my own club or anything, I would just theme it with a bunch of tropical plants, because I think it's like the best type of theming possible. And my friends and I recently threw our very first event called Trop House as well. Just staying on brand. And this event was a combination of EDM and dubstep music combined with video games with a focus on Super Smash Bros. So the idea was we had an event where you could go and dance to really good EDM music. We had several DJs. And then in the back, we had some setups for people to play Super Smash Bros. So you could kind of bounce between listening to music and playing video games while listening to music. Cause you know, you know, standing there and just dancing the whole entire time is fun, but not everybody wants to do that. So I'm trying to like kind of combine a couple really fun things and put them into one ship. And also this Trop House venue that we just built in this theme park is kind of an extension of that where this would be a great venue to host a Trop House event where the DJs are going off on stage. And then on the sides and on the balcony, we would have Super Smash Bros setups for people to listen to music and fight it out in Smash. So we are making some pretty good progress on this bar now. I found all of these bottles on the Theme Makers Toolkit and I downloaded a bunch of them because I thought putting them back here on the shelf would really just sell this whole entire thing really well. And the venue as a whole will have a tropical theme but the bar specifically is going to have a mushroom design going on as a centerpiece because we can make it a bit more colorful and it stands out. And recently I've really been liking the aesthetic of mushrooms and I wanted to see what I could do here with all of the different mushroom pieces I had as scenery options. Now when it comes to theme parks serving alcohol in the first place, I'm always wary about that idea because even though it seems like it would be fun to ride roller coasters and theme park rides drunk, I feel like it might cause a lot of people to potentially throw up that wouldn't otherwise. And I think that's the last thing we want, is for all of our rides to get covered in puke. So I feel like for the most part, it's better to make your drinks a little bit less alcoholic in theme parks and focus more on the flavor and presentation. That being said, we will have the most beautiful drinks you have ever seen here at Trop House. And that's going to be today's comment question of the day is I want your guys' help to make the menu for the Trop House. So in the comment section, let me know what food and drink items we should have. Give me some food options with some really clever funny names along with some mixed drink ideas. And I'm going to actually make some menus on Photoshop and import them into our park for the guests to see and order from. I'm gonna be able to place those LED menus, you know, the ones that you see at fast food restaurants. I'm gonna place those above the bar and in some other areas of the park, along with having some paper menus that people can check out. And since I am a YouTuber who makes a lot of thumbnails, yes, I do have some decent graphic design skills. That comes with the job. <laughs> now the next task, since we finally have a basic outline of the whole entire trap house, 
I wanted to start filling it up with all of our tropical plants, our palm trees, and really grainify it up because this is how we're really good at decorate it because I haven't been doing much with the architecture. We've just been doing some sanitary white walls, but we're about to spruce it up with a bunch of green on white to give it a very West Coast modern architecture, which is a bit cheaper to build with. And then combining that with the beautiful, luscious green nature, it just really pulls it all together. And it's starting to look a lot more beautiful. I love the roller coaster in the background, so the crocodile. Once I make that thing green and put a bunch of plants behind it and around it, it's really gonna make this room seem very cool. And then we can put the roof on top and make both sides look symmetrical. I wonder what the best ways for me to get my guests to interact with this environment would be. I'm thinking about putting some Vista points and then maybe some more vending machines as well could help just get them over here, make it seem somewhat real. I think something cool for Planet Coaster 2 would be way more entertainment options. One of the item pieces in this game has a barbershop quartet, and it sounds really good. And why not have that energy, but with different music genres? You could have different bands and different little just entertainment acts that you would see at public spaces, and then put them in your Planet Coaster parks, and you can have designated points where the guests can come and watch them do those things. Because in general, performances are a big part of theme parks, like that live entertainment aspect. And the game already has the little mascots that walk around. So it's somewhat similar to that, but stationary and things for them to interact with and do. Some different options would be some different independent bands, DJs, potentially jugglers and magicians, dancers, dance groups. There's so many different options with this. It would take a little bit of animation and programming, but I don't think it would be too bad to do something like that. I do think all of these neon bars that I'm using to outline everything really spice in this place up and make it feel way more futuristic and nightclub-esque. It also goes well with all those laser trees and plants that we have around the place. And also I talked to the dancing crabs. The dancing crabs said they also like the neon tube lights. So if anybody has an opinion that defers, I don't even care because the dancing crab's opinion is the only one that I personally care about. It'd be super duper cool if you could put LED lights onto the edge of the coaster tracks. That would be a super cool selling point for Planet Coaster as well. Make everything look really cool during the nighttime. So you don't have to manually light everything up. You can just use the glow in the dark tracks and supports and all of the coasters will look beautiful against the night skyline and then add a bunch of glow-in-the-dark plants, kind of like you would see in Pandora on the movie Avatar. That's one of the reasons I use a lot of these mushroom pieces, is they feel very bioluminescent during the nighttime. And I feel like even the paths could have a lot of LED light features, just like along the edges or in the rails, or even in the center as like dots and stuff. This would all be pretty CPU intensive though, so it might be a bit unrealistic to ask for this kind of stuff. But also, if it's an option and not forced for all the scenery pieces and just was there for the people who have the beefier computers, because I always wonder how much stronger can computers get in comparison to right now? Because I know quantum computing will eventually exist, although I don't think ever on a consumer basis, that'll be like something. Well, okay, so I read that the way quantum computing will exist is it'll be like on the cloud, sort of how we have for cloud gaming right now where the quantum computing will be done on a quantum computer somewhere else, and then you can access that quantum computer online through the internet, and then you can just transfer the data that way. Kind of in the same way that AI is done in servers elsewhere, and then the data is transmitted online because it's really expensive to have computers and those types of servers at your home. It makes me wonder if you could have better Planet Coaster performance if you had more of the data stored on a server online instead of it all being rendered on your own computer. And then the other crazy thing about this game is I am now playing this game on a computer that's over five years old, which is kind of crazy to think about and is now pretty outdated. So I definitely feel if I had a modern day PC, I could probably play and build even more in this game. I'm assuming, right? I don't entirely know how that works. Like how much is the limit between hardware and software and all that? 
but I'm assuming if I had like a supercomputer, I'd be able to do some wild stuff. Maybe someday. But right now we're placing some toucans, because it's the Trop House, so we're gonna have some toucans around. Built a sound booth for our sound engineers. Gonna play some equipment on stage. And we are done for the day. How to stop at some point, so I can make another episode for y'all to show you guys the progress. In the next episode, I'm gonna try to finish it to its entirety. But I'm very happy with how much we finished today. Trap House is looking sick. But you guys know it looks even better during the night time. Who should be the opening performer? I must know. <laughs> Anyways, thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to hit thumbs up and take care of yourselves, y'all. See ya.